Hey guys, Sean G. Phillips here. Welcome to Brainer DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sham video today. Today gonna go out, see what stuff came out today, see what stuff's on sale. Also gonna have a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews at the end of this video for some of the stuff that came out today. And also gonna have my main update update as well this weekend, so be on the lookout for that. But anyway though guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And in the front of Target, they have a thing here for Suicide Squad with like the uh, you know steelbooks of Batman Begins again. I don't remember when these ones came out. I think these were the original ones or reissues. I'm not sure. And uh, Dark Knight. I don't see a steelbook of Dark Knight Rises. I just see the regular Blu-ray. But they have on them, you know, eight dollars up to for Suicide Squad on them. Which I'm definitely going to be seeing that on Thursday. And since that new Harry Potter book is out, they have like all the movies again in the front again. See like right here, uh, new editions of these ones, like two disc special edition ones. I think they're, I don't know if they're anything different about these ones or not, but they only seem to be the DVD versions of them here. But like I guess they're, you know, putting these all back out again because the new book came out. Yeah, but they only seems to be the, uh, you know, uh, well they had this one here, this Steelbook one. I don't know if this was an old one. Oh yeah, so they do have some of the steelbooks down here. These are like new covers on them. They're kind of cool half-bred print, blood print ones, like with these like kind of crystal things, and then this one of the Order of the Phoenix. So these are kind of cool new ones, and I believe these are new, one, uh, you know, steelbooks of them. And this one, Chamber of Secrets. So these are pretty cool. There's actually quite a few things that came out today. One of the big releases was Batman: The Killing Joke, and they have the you know exclusive steelbook version of that one here, which I actually gonna have a review of this. Uh, this weekend. You know, it's had some mixed opinions I saw, but I actually thought it was pretty cool. I haven't seen a lot of the animated Batman movies, but I've seen a few of them. They also have this limited edition one, but they make pretty many though of it. It's like 75000 or so, but it comes with this Joker toy in it. But like I said, it was actually pretty cool. But other than that, they had a lot of other things today. Keanu, which I'm going to have a review of that at the end of this video. And this one, I actually really like this one with um, you know, uh, Nick Jonas called Careful What You Wish For, but he him when he starts you know kind of like his relationship with his neighbor who's this woman who's married and and it's kind of really bad that he does that and like the bad stuff that happens the other one today was the lobster which I heard this is a pretty quirky weird one I definitely have to check this out really love John C Riley especially in check it out like a really great weird show and this was today I think this was a YouTube red movie I think originally and it's um, laser team I don't know a whole ton about this one but I know I believe it was done for YouTube red Red. And this other one was today too, Last Days in the Desert. So I'm going to have a review of that one at the end. Other than that though, Mother's Day was today, which was actually a pretty decent one, you know, Gary Marshall's last film. And The Trust too, which I really, really like this movie with Nicolas Cage and Eliza Wood. It's kind of a heist movie where they kind of, it's just them trying to break into this building because Nicolas Cage gets obsessed with the idea that there's all this money in this building from these drug dealers. But this one was actually really good. Oh yeah, and also today was Meet the Blacks today, which I thought was a really funny spoof parody movie with Mike Epps, like a parody of The Purge. Into the Valley Thrift Store we go. There's like some like shoe fetishes going on around here, tons of shoes. But you see everybody always have those masks on. It always kind of creeps me out when they wear those masks in here. We'll look through here though. I was in here last week, but they had a lot of different stuff in, so I'm gonna try and check here more often because you never know. And they had like that one out of print Disney tin thing that I didn't get, but it didn't have the tin with it, so I didn't really want it without the tin. It really wasn't a bad price at all, but without the tin, it just wasn't as cool, you know, to get it that way. It was, and it wasn't one of the Disney tin ones that I was that interested in. It was one of the, um, the Mickey Mouse like animated ones, but not like the Disneyland kind of ones, which I really liked the most. And someone put all these Yu-Gi-Oh cards on here, like big giant sack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Sometimes these kind of ones have value, but never not one, not really that ones I'm super interested in though. But sometimes they do. But like I said though, you gotta check this place. It seems like there's always new stuff coming in here, but a lot of the times it's the same stuff. But every so often there's some interesting things in here. Well, I ended up finding one interesting thing in here, this one called The End, which is this Burt Reynolds movie with um, Dom DeLuise. So I've never seen this one. I think it's only $2, and this one's like $15, and it actually sounded pretty interesting, though. Like I said, never seen this one before. I have a feeling, though, down the line, Olive Films will probably end up releasing this one, because a lot of the, the MGM titles Olive Films ends up putting out down the line, but still looks kind of interesting, though. 
Yeah, so I just, you know, I ended up getting that one. It was only $2, so not a bad price. And like I said, it looks like a pretty fun one. Never seen it before, but definitely looks like one that looks like a good pickup, though. Because sometimes, you know, even if they're out of print, may not be at that interested in it. This one, though, actually looked like it was pretty good. Into the Salvation Army we go. And for some reason, this Salvation Army like never seems to have DVDs or Blu-rays. Like I don't know why. I see videos of ones, and I've been to some of the past that have tons of movies. This one has like none, but we'll see. It's been like a month or so, so maybe they got some stuff in though. They seem to like have them in the front in here, oh, like in this like random spot, perfect. like sitting here right no, in the front. Thank you. And like, what is that? Like forty <laughs> bucks or something? I don't think that's right. There, no, that's like the number thing. But there are some stuff in the section, but really not much of anything. Real common stuff, you know, like Beauty Shop, Do Where's My Car, Super Troopers. Stuff you really see all the time, pretty much everywhere. And these are not the prices of them. You know, they have like a number system. And this thing is weird. This is like probably someone's like family photos or something like that. That they must have like mixed in here. And this weird like uh, thing, 50 Nuts, which is like some kind of motocross thing or something. And not many VHS in here. And this random Willy Wonka one, this white case they obviously lost the actual case to it so it's like a weird Willy Wonka in just this weird white case if you, if you want one without a case to it but other than that nothing really that different in here this Sleeping Beauty one this is a definitely an old one but this looks like a bootleg like a bootleg sleeping yeah is it a bootleg or is it I don't know this definitely looks like a really really weird scan like a cheap scan I don't know if it's a it's a real one or it's I don't know what I'm pretty sure there's a bootleg these ones all kind of look like bootlegs see these are weird I think they are like odd Disney bootlegs or something like no no these are the real tapes but the cases look really weird I don't know into the goodwill we go so we'll take a look and see if there's anything different in here. You know, the one thing about here is they, you know, they scan the price of stuff so they kind of know. This one looks kind of interesting for $6. Like this British family collection has like the Canterville ghost and this Coral Island, like some kind of like a shipwreck kind of thing. Seems like a pretty decent price for this and I've never seen this set anywhere. So I might get this kind of weird set, especially for this one and the, and the ghost one. Looks sound kind of interesting and I've never seen this set in my life. It's from some weird company too. So I don't know, like I said, I can't find a whole lot about this one online. Into Walmart we go. And it seems like in Walmart they got a lot of stuff today. Like I said, uh, Killing Joke came out today. I don't see any specific editions of that one in here. But I think, you know, like I said, Keanu came out today as well. And then we'll have to go over in the section. I'll show you there's a lot of stuff over there today. And the section is a whole lot of stuff that came out today. There's a ton of stuff. This one came out today called The Tell, which is like um, something, I think it's released from Orion. Like Orion recently came back and it started releasing stuff again. This one was today. This one, it's like a Danny Trejo movie called The Insomnia which I don't know a whole ton about this one I believe Traders was today as well um, Assassin X was today this one um you just, I don't know how you say this one a lot of odd titles today listen on oh, listening yeah it's hard to remember what that one says this one today was as well beta test which this one I don't know a lot about a lot of these ones that came out today this one was today as well so a lot of stuff Red Sonia viral which I'm gonna have a review of this one at the end of the video and um, Amityville Terror I believe this one was today uh, you know, a lot of today the bite was today which I thought that one was a really pretty cool one pretty gross out kind of film and this one looks kind of interesting like called Panzer which is like some kind of a I guess like Nazi horror kind of film or something like that summer camp which I reviewed recently really like this one a lot this was actually a pretty cool movie um, most likely to die came out today I think Perez Hilton is in this one this one looked kind of interesting most likely to die like a slasher film and the other one today as well was thirst and that's another one I don't know a lot about this one at all thirst so definitely was a lot of stuff today a big release week in here and there was actually a couple other ones today as well breaking the bank some Kelsey Grammer movie don't know a ton about this one and like I showed in Target laser team and I actually I think the bronze was today so there was a lot this is a very very big release week for things in here and this one real murders like a Candace Cameron Burr movie so it definitely was a big week and like I said finally they changed out and got a ton of new stuff in here today one other thing they have in here is just pretty cool these brand new like pop art covers on these ones on the blu-rays I think they're the same editions underneath 
underneath with like American Graffiti, The Birds, Dazed and Confused, Psycho, Weird Science, and they have some other ones that I think are only on DVD like Fried Green Tomatoes, uh, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Legend, uh, Last Starfighter, that one from Mall Rats. So these are actually pretty cool, the Animal House one, Bridesmaids, 16 Candles, King Kong, Apollo 13, Reality Bites. And I said, I think some of these might only be for the DVD releases and then some of them are for the Blu-ray releases. So it's pretty cool if you guys don't have these ones. They're pretty cool new slip covers on them. Into Best Buy we go. And over here, you know, they have pretty much stuff I showed everywhere else, you know, like the Trust, Manhattan Night, and they have this Killing Joker one here that has some kind of a comic book in here or something, it includes hardcover graphic novel. I guess it's somewhere inside of here, like a extra book or something for that one. But other than that, though, like I said, they had Viral, which I showed they had that one in, um, you know, in Walmart. This one looks kind of interesting, this Panzer movie, though, because I was looking at it, and it even has something where it's like it's interactive with an app. I might get this one. This one kind of seems like an interesting movie and like you can do something with the movie with an app or something. I don't exactly know how that works. I don't know it like does sounds or something. I don't know. It's it could be kind of a cool thing. I don't know. I might get this one cuz I, I don't know. I've never really seen one that did that kind of thing with it. But other than that though, uh, they have Bite in here for only 12.99 on Blu-ray. It's a very good price for that one. Really like this one a lot. Yeah, well, I got that movie. Like, I don't know. It's probably not that great, but I don't know. It's, something about that sounded interesting. It's one of those kind of things, um, I feel like, you know, like 10 years from now or something, people are going to be like, that app, you won't be able to do anything with that. You know, like, I, there was, hasn't been anything like that in a long time where it's kind of like interactive. There was one thing that came out years ago called like, I'm your man or he's your man. It was like one of these interactive kind of DVDs they made. They used to, they did a lot of that kind of interactive stuff years ago where it was like, you know, you could pick like left or right do you want the character to go outside to the store or go to the bar and then it was like you know then you, they would like have the alternate outcomes and stuff like that so I don't know what this does and I don't know what it would be like to watch the movie without doing that interactive thing it could be like a bunch of not, I don't know who knows but I'm sure not everyone's gonna be doing that interactive stuff but anyway though guys thanks again for watching this DVD blu-ray Tuesday shopping video now stay tuned for a couple new DVD and blu-ray reviews and the first one I got from Warner Brothers is Keanu which is Key and Peele's first feature film together you know they were best known for working together on you know, the Key and Peele show for Comedy Central, which just recently ended. And before that, they were on Mad TV together years back. That's one thing I feel like a lot of people don't always remember. They were working together even years back doing sketch comedy on the, uh, you know, Mad TV. Um, but basically, though, this film is basically about Key and Peele playing cousins. And one of them... You know, Peel's ca you know character ends up having this terrible breakup, and he's really depressed. And he doesn't really know what he's going to do with his life, and everything has kind of become shattered, and he has no inspiration. And the one right after this happens, there's this a cat outside of his door, and he basically he becomes you know friends with this cat, and this cat kind of boosts his life, and it's basically everything to him is this cat. And I even got this fun promo item from Warner Brothers, which is like of you know this isn't something you can get; it's just a promo item, but it's of the calendar because you know uh, Peel. Peel's character is actually taking the cat and like making movie scenes and things like that with the cat and you know reenactments and stuff really fun stuff but basically though what happens is there's this big mix-up and the cat ends up getting stolen by this kind of drug lord kind of guy like this real bad guy played by Method Man and Key and Peel's character after this happens you know Peel's really depressed and doesn't know what he's going to do after the cat is gone because that was kind of everything and made his life complete and he was in much better shape having this cat so that he ends up talking talking Peel into going with him to try and track down who took the cat and you know he fi they basically discover who it is and they you know go to this place with the plan of getting the cat back and you know Method Man's character does not want to give up this cat so they end up kind of acting as if they're like these big bad time guys and have done all these drug deals and killed all these people and they're responsible for all these people that were killed and it was actually these other really bad people but basically though they kind of talk him into if they do this and help him with this job that they're trying to do that he'll sell them the cat so they kind of have to go through this this real fist out of element kind of thing of them having to pretend to be real hard and knowing what they're doing and knowing about drug deals 
Beatles and knowing about, you know, all this kind of bad stuff. So they kind of have to play along and make it like they're real tough to try and hopefully get back the cat. That's essentially what it is. I thought it was a pretty fun movie. Uh, it has on here, though, uh, a making of on here, deleted scenes and a gag reel. But if you're fans of Key and Peele and you're fans of their kind of comedy, which I really like their stuff, I would say definitely worth checking. This one's definitely worth checking out. The next one, and you know, the director of this just recently passed away, like about a week ago, Gary Marshall. And he's done a lot of these kind of films in the last few years, like, um, I think it was Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. And they're all kind of movies where they kind of intertwine. Like, they're made of, there's a lot of kind of intertwining movies. And I always kind of like those movies when it kind of connects. And one character, you know, that you think might have no way they could connect, end up actually connecting to each other. And that's what sort of what this is. is it's all kind of these characters all coming together in, like, different ways and how they come together. But it's basically the new one is Mother's Day. And to try to explain this, it's basically... um. I guess you would say, uh, you know, uh, Julia Roberts' character is this writer who kind of like, she's really popular and uh, she has this kind of regret that she gave up her only child for adoption when she was younger and she kind of never really knew what happened to her daughter and her daughter is played by Brie Lawson who ends up basically tracking down who her mother is and she really wants to see her but then at the same time she's afraid of going to see her because she doesn't know if how it will end up being and she's at the same time she's getting ready to get married and that's kind of what's kind of throwing her life out of whack is she's afraid of getting married because she's afraid that since she never met her mother she kind of I don't know she doesn't want to make these mistakes so it's kind of has that plot going on of her wanting to meet her mother and then Kate Hudson's her friend who tells her that she thinks that she really should go and meet her but then Kate Hudson has all these kind of problems with her family is with her parents because she, her mom doesn't know that she, Kate Hudson's character is married to a man who's an Indian and, and she's very like racist and prejudiced and that family is all kind of weird and Kate Hudson's sister you know is uh, with, with a woman and they think she's with this man and they don't know that that she's a lesbian so it's kind of they have all these kind of stuff that's going on and Jason Sudeikis is in here and uh, you know I don't I, I like these kind of movies it was one of those movies that you know I didn't love um I don't think it was Valentine's Day I didn't like as much. New Year's Eve was kind of a, kind of a downer, though, with him up on the roof, right, with the Nero character on the roof, most of the movie, and kind of sad. But this one was kind of more of an upbeat one, but it also had some kind of slapsticky sort of, to vibes to this a little bit. The one thing I liked about Gary Marshall too was that he was always really cool with like bringing back people and working with the same people a lot. Like people, they were even in shows like in like episodes of like because he directed a lot of TV as well. Like you know, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley and stuff. He would even bring back smaller character actors that hadn't worked a whole lot and put him in his films and stuff. People, you know, he was always really you know cool with that with bringing back people and really like supporting people that he's worked with. And I always thought that was really cool with him was you saw a lot of character actors and stuff who like I said were you were not seeing too much he was always bringing back and stuff and I like that like the as smaller characters in the film I really did like this one it was one of those ones too I went into it not knowing how I was going to feel about it and actually was really surprised that it is a very fun lighthearted and sometimes you want to watch these kind of positive type films and this really was a positive film and it definitely is a loss with Gary Marshall and he also did some really like high profile movies like Pretty Woman as well but you know I like these kind of movies and I thought this one was actually really fun. Uh, the next one is an interesting one from Broad Green Pictures, and it stars Ewan McGregor. And it's kind of like I'm not really very familiar with the Bible at all, to be honest. But this is kind of from what I was reading about this, kind of like a an imagined chapter that was not in the Bible, kind of like a imagined chapter of what because like there was something in the Bible with you know Jesus like not like fasting for 40 days in the desert or something like that and this is kind of like that chapter but showing you more of what happened in it something like that but it's basically though Ewan McGregor who goes out into the desert and he's playing Jesus and he's kind of struggling with him himself and he also sees the other side of himself kind of because he's out there kind of talking to himself and seeing his other side which is kind of like his dark side and he's kind of seeing some weird visions and he sees this one creepy like kind of witch like woman out there like I said I'm not at all familiar with the Bible so I really don't know what they were kind of what they were grabbing from and some of the imagery and stuff like that so I can't comment on that aspect but it's definitely not one from reading other reviews and other people's opinions on it where you have to really know the Bible or anything like that to really get it but you really just all you have to know is it's Hugh McGregor out in the desert kind of struggling with his own self out there and with his kind of dark side and he ends up coming upon this family out there who is having their own set of problems and he kind of has to help them through their issues while he's out there dealing with 
with his own issues and trying to help them. Along the one kid in this is um, the actor who was in Joe and um, Mud. You know, he was in both those films. Really good films. And he's kind of out there trying to help his family. And his mother's out there sick. And I don't know, it's kind of like that. It's like him out there with his struggles. Really nice visual stuff because it was all shot out in the desert. So some really cool scenery and stuff like that. Kind of has a Terrence Malick kind of look to it with the way it was shot. That kind of vibe. And kind of a character piece too. Just kind of following these characters out there. But I did think this was actually pretty well done though and the last one here is from Anchor Bay and the directors of this uh, I think they did the second Paranormal Activity and they just directed uh, Nerve which I really liked a lot and they did this movie right before Nerve I think I believe it was right before and it's um called Viral and this is basically though a it's kind of a one of those kind of movies like that deals with a kind of strain of something that's kind of making people sick. It's like this kind of like worm like kind of creature. And it's basically a girl and her sister who are in high school and, um, around them it's all set in this kind of small kind of california desert type town kind of like where there's nothing around so like if you kind of were quarantined and this is what that deals with you're kind of like stuck away from everything like you can't really go to anything you're kind of in this small area but basically what ends up happening is these kind of worm-like things are starting to kind of pop up and like uh, controlling people and kind of making them go crazy and um, kind of turning them almost into like these zombie like crazy characters and um, it kind of starts off as like uh, it's like you people kind of like look sick and then they kind of start transforming and changing into these kind of mindless kind of characters but basically what ends up happening though is this is kind of going on all around and this area that these that these sisters are in get they get quarantined in this small town like I said where there's nothing around and they can't really go anywhere so they're kind of stuck in there in this quarantined area and it's kind of like what they say they talk about in the back is like uh, girls living with, within quarantine so it's kind of them stuck there and then they're but also like there's like the kids they're all like throwing parties and they're kind of screwing around and there's some weird images too like um because like they can't because they're in the such a middle of nowhere they can't like go to a market or anything because like the market's outside of where they're where they can't leave so like the government's in there dropping off food and they have to kind of like ration things out and things like that and they're all kind of dealing with the high school stuff but like right before this they were all dealing with school but now they're kind of there's no school there's nothing to do and half the kids are all dying from this stuff and they're kind of just sort of there doing this stuff these sisters are out there and their father is stuck outside the quarantine zone can't leave and can't get back in it's actually pretty decent it wasn't like i didn't like it as much as i like nerve but still was pretty cool and some pretty cool sequences in this one and a creepy kind of vibe and um you know machine gun kelly was in this he's also a nerve as well and he was actually pretty cool in this i thought he was a little bit better though a nerve but i still really did like this one like i said i'm surprised this one didn't get a theatrical release because it definitely had that kind of vibe um but i really did like this one like i said it wasn't absolutely perfect in all aspects but was a creepy kind of I guess you'd say sort of end of world kind of viral strain thing where something's controlling the people. And I it kind of had that sort of feel of like the faculty a little bit. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.